we years ago we used to do a lot of pre-planned anhydrous. Um, kind of got away from that because you time was the biggest thing. I mean, if it was dry enough to get across the ground, the ground was in good shape. You didn't want to wait three or four days to put the anhydrous on because you didn't want to take a chance of uh, hurting your germination of your seed. So risk was kind of a big change for that. Um, we are side dressing anhydrous and side dressing 28%. Um, on our high irrigated well, at planting time we'll put about 30 pounds of end with the star and then we'll come back with, depending on uh, the crop, how it looks, on our irrigated we'll put in another 200 to 220 pounds of anhydrous. Um, obviously the anhydrous is cheaper, so that's why on our irrigated we'll use anhydrous for the high amounts of volume from the end. So this year we've got laid on our, our uh, side dress because of all the rain. We had to knife in uh, 28%. Most of the time, we're using anhydrous because the 28 is more money. But the cultivation with the knife going through, we saw a big benefit of that going through with the knife, especially on some of our heavier soils. Um, sometimes I think there's just as much benefit in that cultivation than it is having the nitrogen on early at times. Not always, but sometimes. So the cultivation has paid, I felt, over the years. Some of the heavy clays that we get, you run the risk of opening up that slot and drying it down deep, but I guess we'll take that chance. Usually at a pound of end, we usually figure about, a, our rule of thumb is bush, pound of end per bushel of corn. Um, depending on the crop condition, as far as it looks really good, we may up that to 1.2, 1.3, because there's a lot more potential there. And then obviously if it's poor to the crop, like some of the stuff I side dressed last week, I'm below that one pound per bushel. Um, I guess for my high yield guys, I find that the, the best source of nitrogen is uh, consistently manure. And it doesn't matter whether it's dairy manure or hog manure or chicken manure or turkey manure. But uh, for guys to get a handle on the amount of manure that they're putting on and the rate and uh, the nitrogen that is involved with that product, um, and then uh, doing some nitrate testing to, to follow up with some additional nitrogen. But uh, consistently, the guys that are getting the highest yields in, uh, in my area have all got manure in their, uh, in their um, fertilizer program. I'll add to that manure. We, we have been on our irrigated trying to put as manure on. We've tried some chicken manure and a little bit of dairy manure. The problem with dairy manure is it's got a lot more uh, compaction from the tankers that are wild there. So what you gain from the manure, you lose in compaction. So we've been really, really watching. If things get a little bit wet in the fall, there's no manure. We just take our chances. Because I think a lot with the trash, that's one of the things we're trying to do is if we can get some manure out there, that's going to help break that trash down a little bit more for the spring. Um, but the problem is, is the time, is the compaction. Uh, okay, we uh, have also have a, a manure program because we're in it, we happen to have the hog industry or a hog business. Uh, so, uh, now our manure is, is never applied to the corn stalks in the fall just because we're usually uh, later in the season, you, you, you get into wet weather, and so we, we try to really minimize the amount that we depend on putting on in the fall. Uh, our, our manure for the corn ground is applied in the spring. We have a drag hose system, and, and so that, that is, is applied in the spring. We also apply some inter-row about the end of June, uh, so some of the ages get applied that way. Uh, our general hand application is we, we uh, our, our planter is, is equipped with both uh, liquid in furrow for a starter pop up. We also still have the dry fertilizer hoppers on there, and we've got those openers set four inches to the side and four deep, so it's four by four instead of your traditional two by four. So between the the, the 624 six in slot and and what we put through dry is about a 31 uh, no foss about uh, I think it's an eight or a nine potash and about an eight sulfur and and so that gives us upwards to 40 pound in that application. 
And then we, when we put our pre-emergent herbicide on, we use the UAN as a carrier, and so we put about between 50 and 60 pounds on at that time. Um, in, in the past then, with that application, plus the dead manure, that's adequate in. Uh, and anything that didn't get manure, then we gotta go in and, and side dress some way, shape, or form. Uh, as, as our yields have gone up, we've had to look at increasing our end rates in the, in the side dressing uh, process. And, and actually this year, we just modified our sprayer slightly and, and we're actually dropping UAN between every second row. We're not knifing it in, which is uh, fastening on a chunk of uh, sump pump hose at the nozzle body and, and hang about a foot and a half, two feet of sump pump hose. And, and that, so that's between every second row. Uh, it's looking excellent this year, uh, long term, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, timing is everything, and you, know, you asked about timing, and that if you read all the research, you know, say spool feed your nitrogen, get it at adequate timing, and, and at its key points of maturation, having some available for early growth, and then again, you pre side dress for its, um, when it hits that fast vegetative growth stage. And then the, the kicker always comes in that timing when you have pre tassel prompt to pollination, where again, you have another I'd say the slug of nitrogen that the plant needs. And, you know, that's the timing that's really difficult to hit. And there are some folks that are doing some irrigation and putting some through their irrigation to hit that timing if they're seeing a problem. Um, but again, it's the cost and the feasibility of it is difficult to measure. I'll go back to every farm is different. Soil textures are different. The availability of what you have for nitrogen sources, whether it's poultry litter, dairy litter, or dairy manure, um, hog manure, um, those options will fit in every situation where, where you have it available. Poultry litter in our area is, everybody uses poultry litter if they can get their hands on it. And most of the time our dairy guys are using the dairy manure themselves, uh, similar with the hog guys. Um, but the poultry litter gives a lot of versatility to it just because of the timing and the less compaction in our variable soils. Um, if any of you have been kind of outside of Saginaw Bay and, and went across Michigan, you'll see that soil, soils can change within 30 feet. So you can go from what Jay would call a blow sand um, down to a heavier clay soil and then even into muck ground in the same field. And so you really got to watch some of the other application or the sources that you have to make sure that you're getting the most bang for your buck depending on what sources you have.